Okay, so um, welcome. This is Pedro Mendes and my colleague Gonçalo Coelho. Uh, we are here to comment on chapter two of the book Advances in Financial Machine Learning by Marcos Lopez de Prado, 2018. Uh, please be advised that most of the text is extracted from this book. This chapter is about financial data structures. Uh, the objectives and key takeaways that we uh, learned from this chapter was first, uh, it uh, helps us uh, how to work with uh, unstructured data, and from that, how to derive a structured data set adequate for machine learning algorithms. Uh, it is very important that we uh, avoid using others' processed data set because uh, one will most likely find, uh, find what others have already found, so there's no usefulness uh, in that uh, information. So uh, the starting point should really be a, a recollection of raw and unstructured data. So um, there are uh, essentially four types of financial data. First one is uh, fundamental data. Uh, examples we have assets, sales, liabilities, costs, earnings, micro variables, etc. Then we have market data, such as volume, dividends, open interest, yields, volatilities, quotes, uh, coupons, etc. Uh, thirdly, we have analytics, analyst uh, recommendations, which I fully uh, sympathize with because I was analyst for, for a long period of time. Uh, credit rate ratings, ex earnings expectations, news sentiments. And then, uh, uh, last but not least, uh, alternative data, such as satellite, CCTV video, Google searches, uh, Twitter, chats, metadata. Um, so, uh, going into detail in, in these two, uh, in, in these four sorts of uh, uh, financial data, starting from the least interesting one, which is fundamental data. Fin fundamental data can be found in regulatory filings and in uh, business analytics. Most of it uh, is accounting, so it's reported quarterly, uh, uh, by semester, annually, uh, this, 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 this sort of uh, frequency, which is a low frequency. It is typically reported with laps and often uh, back uh, filed uh, or reinstated. This is very important. For instance, if you uh, uh, try to, uh, to extract relationships between, say, um, real-time data such as uh, mar uh, uh, market quotes on uh, on stock prices, and then try to uh, uh, have a have a relationship against, for instance, uh, GDP. GDP figures are quarterly, are not the, uh, are, are not uh, known uh, until uh, some 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 time has passed, and it's often uh, backfilled or even reinstated. Okay, so this is very important, and it's one of the main uh, limitations of this sort of data. Uh, so it is unlikely to, to provide relevant insights as it is easily uh, available and uh, nonetheless it can be used in combination with other uh, uh, data types. Next we move on to market data. Market data includes all trading data in exchanges or OTCs. It is very, uh, very uh, abundant and may be difficult to process. It is uh, important to have access to the unstructured raw data that we can extract from this market data. And as in this case, there is a possibility to, 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 to explore some patterns which are, are, are not uh, clearly visible in the day-to-day -day ma uh, market data that we, that we see, for instance, on Bloomberg terminals. And uh, if we look into more details in, into the available data, we may uh, reconstruct trading books or understand footprints of market participants and therefore uh, uh, understand some patterns and act accordingly. Okay, so this is very important. Then we move on to analytics. Analytics corresponds to, the, uh, to derivative data, uh, meaning data that derives from fundamental market or alternative data. It is not, the, uh, it is not the, definitely the, the most interesting type of data because it was already processed by other, as, uh, as, uh, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, so it brings uh, a few added value, although you can also use this data in combination with other, other uh, data types. Then we get to, uh, to, al to alternative data, uh, and here you can find more value. It, this refers to alternative data, which is produced by individuals, uh, pro uh, business processes, and sensors. 
um, and, and its main characteristic uh, co uh, is that it corresponds to primary information, i.e. it's um, a step, it's, it's uh, information that is previous to other sets of, uh, 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 of information or data, okay? So you have here the opportunity to work with these unique data sets which are also very hard to store, to manipulate, to, to operate, so go figure. Uh, there's, in, there's significant potential to extract from here uh, and this is value and, uh, and, and therefore this, uh, this entails significant value uh, uh, most likely, okay? For instance, you can look at uh, data from satellite data from uh, uh, oil uh, extraction, for oil uh, transportation, for Google Analytics that show you how people move between, uh, how people commute when they go shopping, when they go working, uh, work, uh, and uh, when they meet, where they meet, why, at what time, uh, at what hours. So this all uh, entails very significant data. Okay. Uh, so uh, um, based on this, we can we can uh, you, you know that uh, before you uh, we can do some application of uh, of machine learning algorithm. We have to parse and extract uh, valuable information from the data, and then store the, uh, this extraction into a workable format, which typically uh, uh, is a table. And uh, when uh, Data scientists work with uh, with tables. You know there are uh, tables entail rows, they entail uh, columns, and rows are typically called uh, bars. So we have these two two categories of uh, of bar methods. One, uh, the first one is uh, standard bars, where the, ob the, ob the objective is to transform observations characterized by irregular frequency into an homogeneous series. And uh, this uh, many many data vendors have this facility. Then we have information-driven bars, where the purpose is to sample more frequently when there is new market information in a market microstructure sense. Now, um, standard bars we can we can uh, we can break down them into four types. Uh, four uh, the first type is uh, it's the most uh, uh, let's say uh, primary of all of them. It's the simplest. It's the Less uh, is the least interesting in terms of uh, information inside. It's obtained by sampling information at, a fi at fixed time intervals. It typically includes timestamp, volume weighted average price, open price, close price, etc. All this sort of information that you can easily find anywhere, pretty much anywhere. It's very popular, but it should be avoided. Why? Because markets do not process inf information at a constant time interval. Uh, for instance, the, the first trading hour is typically uh, one of the busiest. Uh, of an of uh, of regular uh, uh, trading day, so um, this is this is one uh, this is one very uh, important uh, characteristic, and and another reason is the uh, time sample series have poor statistical uh, properties such as heteroscedasticity, serial correlation, and non normality of returns. Uh, just just to name a few. Then we have tick bars. Tick bars involves the extraction of the data mentioned above, but only each time a predetermined number of transactions occurs. For instance, 1,000 ticks, 2,000 ticks, 10,000 ticks, you name it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's your choice and you can uh, try it uh, on various uh, dimensions. This means that sampling is synchronized with the speed at which the information is generated and uh, therefore it allows to have this uh, uh, distribution with more desirable uh, statistical uh, properties. Uh, and nonetheless, it is important to have a, a, a special care w with outliers, as we have seen during classes. Okay, so we move on to volume bars. Volume bars circumvent the problem that order, fr uh, order fragmentation it, uh, introduced in, uh, in terms of arbitrariness in the number of, uh, of ticks. This is done through sampling each time a uh, predefined amount of an asset's units, uh, such as sampling every time a swap contract exchanges 1,000 units, regardless of the number of ticks. Then we get dollar bars. Dollar bars focus on values, uh, as it samples an observation every time a predefined market value is exchanged. So uh, we can give basically two, uh, two, two examples of why 
dollar bars are interesting and uh, by the way we call it dollar, dollar bars but it could be it's not just dollars it could be euros yens and or any other currency for that matter one reason is that for uh, uh, basically uh, the, the number of, uh, of uh, offshares traded is a function of the actual value exchange therefore it makes sense sampling bars in terms of uh, dollar value e exchange um, rather than ticks or volumes uh, particularly uh, when the analysis involves significant price uh, price fluctuations. Another argument uh, would be that um, that makes uh, dollar bars actually more interesting than time tick or volume bars, as we saw above, is that the number of outstanding shares often changes multiple times over the course of a securities life, uh, securities life such as corporate actions, name it um, uh, stock splits, uh, uh, M&As, etc. So. Uh, um, you uh, the, the the best methodology to deal with uh, with all this stuff is dollar bars now moving to my colleague uh, gonzalo so thank you pedro and uh, let's move on with our presentation well the information driven bars may not be directly observed in the markets uh, which work in a more complex way than standard bars the purpose of these bars is to sample more frequently when new information arrives to the market uh, for instance, the tick imbalance bars that samples bars whenever the tick uh, imbalances ex exceed our expectations, uh, meaning that it can exceed the defined threshold that we define. Um, here it's assumed that in general there will, there will be more ticks towards a particular up and down direction. Uh, and this happens if there are more informed trades that believe on a particular direction. And uh, the objective here is to detect uh, information as early as possible in order to make better decisions and uh, get a notification on time of potential trading opportunities. Uh, the volume and dollar imbalance bars follow nearly the same logic, uh, but uh, here, in this case, the purpose is to sample bars when uh, volume or dollar imbalances diverge from our expectations, meaning the, our threshold. And the uh, tick runs, runs bars, um, it, it may be useful to analyze the sequence of runs and take samples when that sec sequence diverges from our pre-established thresholds once again. Um, and the volume dollar runs bars, um, it's similar to, to the previous one, but uh, also focused on the volume and dollar amount. So here we, we distinguish exactly between the ticks and the volume dollars but uh, in two in two different um, uh, dimensions one of them is the imbalance and the other dimension is the runs so about uh, dealing with multiple product series um, there are many different products that change time series because of their complexity and their nature and uh, for that reason, it's needed to model different uh, time series of assets when the weights have to be dynamically adjusted over time. Um, when there are existence of corporate actions like M&A, stock splits, uh, cash dividends and so on, um, which means that uh, there, are, there is an existence of corporate actions. These instruments have different components and uh, oblige the, um, the practitioner to, um, to make different time series and to adjust them um, based on, based on the, the, the behavior of that instrument. Uh, the, the lecture here uh, is given um, uh, an ETF trick and uh, there is a solution that transforms any complex multi-product data set into a single data set that resembles the total return cash a ETF. Uh, ETF stands for exchange traded fund. Um, here also uh, it simplifies coding by assuming that we only train, trade cash-like products independently from the composition of the underlying series. Uh, another solution that is given is a principal component analysis, which is a mathematical procedure that uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a set of observations. Um, and a single future role that is more adequate than the ETF trick when dealing with a single futures contract. And it encompasses uh, the creation of a time series of cumulative role gaps 
and extract that gap series using a series of tick bars only from Bloomberg. Um, and about sampling features, uh, let's say here that uh, regarding this chapter, uh, more direct to machine learn algorithms and the human um, behavior here, uh, machine learning algorithms are less accurate to learn from continuous, homogeneous and structured data sets, uh, meaning that they generally work better with practical examples. <laughs> So, as we predict, if humans strike, uh, try to predict events, like uh, whether the next 5% absolute return, 10-20% will be positive or negative, uh, this is more like a guess if we make uh, that prediction. On the other hand, if we make an algorithm that uh, tries to find informative features and additional information, that will help us achieve a more accurate prediction because it considers more information than humans and uh, compiles everything in, in one single shot. Uh, the, one of the solutions here uh, might be the sampling for reduction, uh, which means a down sampling, and it reduces the amount of data from structured data sets to fit in the machine learning algorithm, and it can be a line space sampling or a random sampling, uh, the line space sampling uses a sequential sampling at the constant step size and the random sampling uses uh, uniform distribution. Uh, one of the advantages and the main advantage for the line space sampling is its simplicity and uh, uh, the practical way to be used, but another disadvantage is uh, the arbitrary step size that is taken by the, the model owner. Um, in the, also, the uniform sampling can be a valid alternative because it goes across the entire set of bars. But uh, both of these methods, either it is a line space or a random sampling, um, it, there is a criticism around this because the final samples do not necessarily contain the subset of most relevant observations. And uh, because there is a down sampling, it may cut some... Um, uh, relevant information that could be included on our model but uh, this is the way of doing uh, and resolving this statistical issue and uh, also there is an event-based sampling which can be characterized um, when we when we uh, define and spot a, a significant event and let the machine learning algorithm learn whether there is an accurate prediction function under those circumstances. Well, it may, may fail, but uh, in, in that case, uh, we would redefine what constitutes an event or try again with alternative features. So it's basically also being redefined every time it's, it, it's run. And uh, one of the event-based sampling methods is the QSUM filter which is a quality control method designed to detect a shift in the mean value of a measured quantity away from a target value, which means basically that uh, once uh, any observation goes far away from our expectation or uh, uh, given here a mean value of a, measure, a measured quantity, um, well, it's spotted and uh, it, uh, it uh, returns um, um, an alert and uh, this is a uh, this is a quality control that uh, that ensures that the this sampling is uh, is well is well addressed so thank you this was our presentation i hope you enjoy it and learn from it so goodbye